Our first presenter is Heather Verga from Forum One Communication. Hi, Heather. Well, thank you, everyone. Today we're going to talk about advancing our professional goals through social media and the best platforms and tactics to, to accomplish your goals. Social media, most people use it, uh, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, we use it to connect and share with our colleagues, classmates, families, and friends. Some interesting statistics are that 1.06 billion users on Facebook. There are 800 million users on YouTube, 500 million users on Twitter, although only 200 million of those are actually active. And there's 200 million users on LinkedIn. We uh, used, we conducted the social media survey and we got some interesting um, feedback from you guys. 80% use social media. In fact, 44% of those people actually use it multiple times a day. And when we talked about actually how you're using it and what platforms you're using, 82% of the respondents of the survey are using YouTube. 73% are using Facebook, while only 43.5% are using uh, LinkedIn. So while everyone on their cat has a Facebook page, fewer people have invested the same amount of time in building their professional identity. So you might be thinking, what's the difference anyway? Well, Facebook is for personal um, connections, and LinkedIn is for, for professional connections. Look at my profiles, for example. My Facebook page is all about my kids. I use it to connect with my family and friends. And my LinkedIn profile is my professional space. It's what I look like when I'm working, and there will be no posts about how sick my twins have been or what cool things they did. So why should you use LinkedIn? Well, first, it's the largest professional network, and it's growing rapidly. It's a place where you can build and maintain your professional identity, where you can have sort of a master contact book. Um, you can learn about people, learn about companies and organizations, and you can also use it to start conversations with other professionals in your network, and you can look for jobs. So how can you use it? Now that you know that it's the, the largest professional network, how can you use LinkedIn? Well, I'm glad you asked. First and foremost, we really want to focus on our professional identity. In the social space, this is an opportunity for you to communicate to your colleagues and your classmates um, who you are. So once you establish your professional profile, you will control one of the top search results for your name. Um, notice that in this Google search, the, my LinkedIn profile is the first um, item that comes up in my search when I look for my name. That's pretty powerful. You're also going to be using your LinkedIn profile to make connections, and it's really not unlike a social media sibling site. I mean, the goal is the same, right? So you want to make sure that you're making professional connections in LinkedIn. You can use LinkedIn to find and reconnect with classmates and colleagues and connect with new people. The goal is to build a network of people that you actually trust and connect with. So what's next? It's not just for resumes, right? So LinkedIn provides you with a perfect platform to engage with your network and join the conversation. Joining and participating in groups is an excellent opportunity to join the conversation on LinkedIn. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to ask questions and make contacts, to, uh, look for jobs, and establish yourself as an industry expert. It's also a great place to search for companies if you want to know about companies or organizations, what they do, uh, more information about their goals, and it also provides you with an opportunity to see who works in those companies and organizations and connect directly with them. Looking for a job? Well, LinkedIn is also a great place to look for a job. The cool thing about LinkedIn is that once you connect with people, you have these tertiary connections through their connections. So if you find a job that's interesting to you and you will see from LinkedIn how many people in your network are connected by first or second, third connections. And if you don't know someone uh, by a first connection, you can leverage your contacts um, to help give you an introduction to the hiring manager or to the key stakeholders of the companies and organizations you're interested in. 
So with all these cool features, how would you how should you get started? Well, there these are going to give you some useful tips for those of you that are just starting out and then those of you that already have profiles. We know that just under half of the people that answer the survey actually use LinkedIn. Um, but I'm sure everybody's heard of it before and knows some general stuff. I'm going to walk through some of the basics and then get into more details. So first things first, you must complete your profile. In the social space, we end up spending a lot more time talking to each other in um, email, text, or social media platforms. So it's really important that you upload a picture of yourself, preferably a professional one, and that way people have the opportunity to, to see you. When you build out your profile, you want to make sure that you're building in a nice, concise, but clear summary about your skills and experience. And this is a really good opportunity to, um, to include as many keywords in your profile summary um, as you can. You may also uh, include any presentations and documents that you've posted on SlideShare. You'll notice right underneath the summary, um, they've got little thumbnails of uh, presentations and documents. So that's a good way to share with your network the work that you've done. You'll also want to make sure that you list your three most current jobs um, so that people can see what you've done. And you want to list your, um, your education and any awards or honors that you've received. Really, this is the place where you want to honk your own horn and, and really give yourself some credit for what you've done because people are going to be looking for you and seeing your work. Remember a few slides ago we talked about your professional identity? Well, this is where you're going to claim it. When you create a vanity URL, like you see here with the linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Heather Verga, that's a link directly to my profile, and that is what rendered in the Google search results. So you want to make sure that you grab that when you build out your profile. Now, LinkedIn wants to help you connect and grow your network, and they're going to be really helpful in that. Once you set up your profile, put in your work experience, they're going to actually be already filtering through and giving you a list of potential people for you to connect with. So within a few clicks, you can actually build and grow your network very quickly. Um, additionally, if you meet people at industry events or conferences, you share cards or contact information, go back and follow up with them via LinkedIn. It's really the, the friending of professional networking. Once you've connected with people and you've, uh, got, you've got your friends and colleagues and other influential people in your space, you have an opportunity to endorse them for their skill set. Again, LinkedIn is really good about making these things really easy. Endorsing is literally a couple of clicks. You select the items that you want or the skills or experience you want to endorse them for and click endorse. And LinkedIn will also give you an opportunity to, to endorse additional people if you notice the little pop-up that has the four pictures there of my uh, people in my network, I can actually go to them and endorse them for their skill set too. So it's really fast and easy. Now, while it's not necessarily quid pro quo, when you endorse the connection, they're more likely to endorse you back. And the reason why getting endorsements is important is because it's more likely that you'll be ranked higher in the uh, search results for that skill set. So if somebody's searching for a specific skill and you've been endorsed a great number of times, and you're more likely to come up in that search result. So this is building your professional capital, and it's really illustrating your expertise in the focus areas. Now, another thing you can do on Facebook uh, is recommend people you know. And this is the same as it is in any other way to recommend. It's like the old-fashioned writing a re recommendation. It's, it's really a way to elaborate on somebody's work or performance in a specific role in your own words. And this is, this is important to do. It, endorsing is easy and fast, but for colleagues and, and people and business partners that you've worked with that you feel um, would really benefit from a recommendation, I encourage you to do that. Now, when you recommend people, like it was with the endorsements, they're more likely to recommend you back. Um, you don't have to recommend everyone that recommends you. Um, hopefully you have some good things to say about them, so you can have <laughs> a nice comment. Um, but don't be afraid to ask people to recommend you. Have you worked with, with anyone that you feel like would, be, uh, would provide you with a really good recommendation? LinkedIn provides you the opportunity to easily reach out and ask them. So, this, oops, did I pop through a slide here? 
Okay, groups. So there are groups on LinkedIn that are basically tailored to your interests. And it allows you to connect with people um, in your space. So you've spent all this time uh, building your network and getting your connections lined up and endorsing and recommending and your profile is looking really robust. But now what? Now is the time to really get involved in the group. And, and we've had this talk about LinkedIn having endorsements lined up for you and connections lined up for you. Well, they also are going to recommend some groups for you. So this is really uh, a good opportunity to choose the ones that you want to join in on. So if you notice here, we've got a list of groups. And all you have to do to participate is either join or view. So some groups require you to join first. You see the join button here, you just click join. You get approved by the moderator and then you're now part of the group. Groups that say view, you can actually participate without joining. Um, so you can see that Nahari has a number of groups. And the first one on the list is an open group. So if you click it, you can view the conversation. We'll go ahead and go to the next screen in this. Um, shows an example of what it's like when you're involved in a conversation. Um, it's really cool to see what people have said, um, to be able to add a comment, and to find other people's profiles on this page. While you're engaging in groups, you might find that somebody that you're engaging with or that has some answers would be an interesting contact for you as part of your network. And so, again, you can uh, connect with them via LinkedIn very easily in this space. So, Discovering new highlights. Your home page is actually a nice home base. A lot of times I think people go to their profile um, and, and look at updating your profile and whatnot when you're in LinkedIn. But your home page is sort of um, a nice spot to come in and, and see who's there. So it's going to offer an opportunity for you to provide an update if you care to share something. Um, you can see more people that you may know that you might want to connect with. Uh, it's going to let you see your contact conversations, so if you wanted to, to chime in. And another interesting thing is um, it tells you who's viewed your profile, or at least the number of people that have viewed your profile. And as you are more active on LinkedIn, more people are going to start connecting with you. So if you go in and you update your profile, you connect with a few people, you get higher up in the, the display of people you know list on the right side. So when people log into their LinkedIn, they're going to see your profile, you'll be top of mind, and then they're going to connect with you. So what does this all mean in the long term? We got this profile, we built it out, um, you've done all this work, you've connected with everyone. Is this going to be an ongoing thing where you have to constantly be keeping it up? No, because you're in maintenance mode. Really it's about going in and adding new connections as you make them endorsing and recommending people as you can, and also updating your profile as your goals and responsibilities change. Um, you basically have the opportunity then to really get engaged in the conversation. Join in the group, participate in what you find interesting. You will get email alerts when there's new content. And um, from there, that's, that's it. <laughs>